Hi guys, it's Mr. Dave with the Ray Kitty Creation Workshop and you are watching the Ray Kitty Science Project. Thank you guys for tuning in again. Uh, we've got another fun uh, lots of science episode going on today. We're going to kind of continue on with a couple of the concepts we've used before uh, talking about electricity. Uh, if you tuned in to one of the earlier episodes where my wonderful daughter Haley, well she's not like right here, but she was right here, uh, was controlling my hand with electricity and I, I promised you I'd explain some of how electricity works. Now's the time where we'll talk about electricity. So we're going to talk about some of how electricity works uh, and how we use electricity, some different families of electricity, things like that. So if you are going to get your materials for this episode, if you want to check things out and do some of these things together, I do for sure want to say you want to have an adult on hand for this one, okay? Because there is a fun at home uh, activity that you can do uh, that will involve, in this case, I have six nine volt batteries, okay? So you'll want, you'll need at least four, six works a little bit better. Uh, six nine volt batteries, that's these square ones, and you will want some of this aluminum foil, okay? So you'll want some aluminum foil, uh, and you will want mechanical pencils, okay? Uh, you'll need at least one mechanical pencil that has a couple of those lead in there, because we're actually gonna use the graphite from in there. We call it lead, it's not lead, it's actually graphite, and we're gonna use that graphite. And I have some of these alligator clips. Now, if you don't have these lying around, you can buy them online or you can go to the hardware store. These are very inexpensive and there's lots of fun little things you can do uh, with electricity with these little alligator clips. Uh, so these are a fun thing to have around anyway. Uh, and so you'll want two of these alligator clips. You will want some pencils and foil and nine volt batteries. Those will be the ones that are easy to get uh, if you want to follow along with this experiment at home, okay? So that one we'll get into a little bit. Another one we're going to do is with these little bitty LED bulbs, okay? Uh, these little bitty guys here, uh, again, it's very inexpensive. If you want to kind of invest in your at-home Ray Kitty Science kit, uh, you can buy uh, online. You can get um, a hundred of these for like seven dollars. Um, they're a little bit harder to find in town, and so that's why I say maybe get these ones online because uh, like I say, they are a little trickier to find in town. Uh, you can sometimes come across them in your hardware stores. Uh, so those are the main at-home ones we're gonna have, and then we have some other things we're gonna play with. If you happen to have a plasma globe, <laughs> then we can talk about that. Uh, and I have our little energy stick here, okay? So these are the materials we're gonna be using today, and we're gonna talk about electricity. Now we're gonna talk about um, in this one here, we're not gonna really talk about static electricity. We'll save that for another episode uh, where we have the big Van de Graaff and those kind of things. So in this one, we're gonna talk about current or circuit electricity, okay? And that is electricity that has to follow a path uh, and it will lead to something and from something to give us that current or that circuit, okay? Now in alternating current, uh, it can actually go down to earth to complete that circuit. Uh, or in the United States, we say ground, uh, but, <laughs> but uh, it, is, it can complete that circuit with earth. Uh, and that is the kind like you see in your wall outlets, okay? Now, I bring that up because I also want to offer um, the advice, do not play with the wall outlets, okay? Do not stick things in them. We're dealing with electricity. You always want to be safe with electricity. Um, you can easily hurt yourself, usually, the danger, especially with those wall outlets, is not necessarily with being electrocuted. The danger is with being burnt very, very badly, and it can happen very quickly. So do not go playing with those outlets in the wall, things like that. Even when you have all your 9 volts here, make sure you've got an adult present with you, because uh, even this one here will see, we'll show you how uh, those electrons can cause a lot of heat very quickly. And that's what's fun we're doing with this one, but you will want to make sure you have an adult around. Okay, so don't go playing with the, with the light sockets, okay? So um, we're gonna start with that alternating current, just mentioning it real quickly. Alternating current is usually how we get our electricity, okay? Most of our devices nowadays work off of uh, direct current. Even like this little guy right here, this little cellular telephone, uh, it works off direct current. Uh, even though you plug it into the wall, you have that little, um, I call them a wall wart. Uh, but you have that little thing like this 
This is a transformer, okay? It doesn't, er, 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 and it is not a robot in disguise to my knowledge. I'm just saying, I don't think it is. But uh, a transformer is going to change the alternating current that we have coming from the wall, uh, and it's going to change it into direct current so that our devices can use it, okay? Now, when we're talking alternating current, when we get to this guy here, there is actually a Tesla coil inside of this that is going to change it back from alternating current, I mean, from direct current, again, to alternating current, so we'll talk about that in a little bit when we get there, okay? So we're talking mainly about direct current. Direct current flows in one direction. Yay! Okay. Um, yeah, not like it's not like a Harry Styles thing. It's like it just goes one way. Okay. So we have direct current, and we're going to be messing with direct current primarily till we get to that guy. Good. Okay. So let's start off very simply with our little LEDs. Okay. Uh, an LED is a light emitting diode. This little bitty guy here, okay? Uh, and we have a battery. And we're going to use these to kind of explain just a little bit of what happens uh, with our direct current, okay? A battery, uh, just like these batteries here, have got a positive and a negative, okay? These little bitty batteries here also have a positive and a negative, okay? Uh, in this case, the negative is the side with the little bumps on it. Uh, so if you are doing fun little uh, working with these batteries, these little, um, I call them watch batteries or button cell batteries. If you're working with these batteries, the inside of that ring is the negative, the back is the positive. Okay. Now that's important because those electrons, when we're dealing with electricity, we're dealing with electrons, okay? That's the outside part of the atom, are the electrons, okay? They're the ones that go around the outside. So there you go. Uh, so these ones here, uh, our electrons in this battery here are going to flow from that negative to the positive, from the negative to the positive. Now that matters with some things, okay? Some things are not polarity sensitive, uh, but an LED is polarity sensitive. That means we have to have a positive and a negative, okay? So a very easy little uh, way to do if you do get a hold of some of these LEDs, uh, first you want to notice because it is polarity sensitive, uh, that we have one lead shorter than the other, okay? So if it looks like a little robot, uh, you have a little bitty robot there, uh, and you have one longer and one shorter lead there, or one longer and shorter leg, okay? If this were to walk around, it would walk in circles, okay? Um, so a negative side is gonna be that shorter lead. If I put this on here with the longer lead touching the negative of the battery, if we don't burn out our LED, uh, it's not going to do anything because it's polarity sensitive. Okay, so I turn it around and ha ha, we have light. Okay, so this little battery is sharing those electrons. Those electrons are now moving and they're exciting the little uh, diode in there. And that diode, when it's excited, uh, shoots out those photons. The photons are the light that we see. Now, different LEDs will give off different colors. This one's a nice bright uh, orange. Okay, uh, this one here, this little LED, uh, will give us actually a whole bunch of different colors out of that same little LED. So we can get a whole bunch of different colors coming out of that same little LED, okay? Now, the way that works is it actually has three different panels. So you can see that moving around in a circle there. Uh, there are three different diodes in there uh, that are giving us those three different colors, okay? Because an LED will usually only give us one frequency, like we talked about when we talked about light before. Uh, this LED has three diodes in there, so it's giving us three, okay? So this is a very simple circuit, okay? A circuit is when you are completing, uh, like, circuit racing or uh, when you are going all the way around to where you begin, okay? It doesn't have to be a circle, but it has to end where it begins. So we have to be able to push those electrons and then get them back on the other side, okay? So this is a very simple one to do at home uh, if you've got some of these little bitty LEDs. Now, this is something maybe you've done like at a table outreach at a science event or something like that, but I personally have a way uh, that I kind of like to step it up a notch uh, because when you do that at events, you put your little LED on there and you walk away and your LED is lit up and you're like, yay, I have a little flashlight. Well, your little flashlight is on and then you set it down in the car, it's still on uh, and you don't really have a way to turn it off. So an easy way, if you are at home, okay, 
Now, this is a Ray Kitty trick, so you can't, you can't go spreading this around everywhere, okay? Uh, is to take a little piece of tape, and you're going to make kind of a uh, sleepy eye out of that battery, okay? So I took electrical tape, and I made a sleepy eye out of that battery, okay? And what that is, is this tape is an insulator. An insulator is something that makes it hard for energy to pass through. Just like when you wear a coat, when you go outside, that insulates your body from the cold around you. Uh, an insulator will insulate the electricity or that electricity energy from our little LED. So if you put that on there and then you put your little LED on there, okay, you slide your LED on and if you look here, it's insulated, so it's not on now, okay? But what we've made here is a switch, okay? And you're like, well, Mr. Dave, how do we make a switch? Well, because if now, when you push it, when you squeeze on this part here, it's a contact switch. So it's a very simple switch. Uh, if you are teaching this electronics to uh, your students, this is a very easy way to demonstrate a pressure switch or a contact switch because we have an open circuit when it's not touching. And when you squish it, we have a closed circuit. So we're able to do that. Uh, then all you've got to do is take some tape, wrap up your little uh, battery here with your LED. You can tape it all together, uh, and then it'll stay as a unit, and you can turn it on and off. That way it doesn't just die in your car, and then you're like, Mom, my thing's broken. Yeah, no, now it'll last a real long time because it's only going to be on when you're squeezing it. A little light like this, you'll probably be able to use for a very long time unless you are trying to read all of the last Harry Potter with it, okay? Uh, in which case, it'll last <laughs> about three quarters of that book, and then, yeah, that's it. So uh, this is a fun way to kind of up your game on your little LED flashlights, but we've created a circuit, and that circuit has a switch. So when it's not touching, we don't have a circuit. When it touches, now we have a circuit, a closed circuit, okay? So it's an open and closed circuit with that LED. Now that's a fun one. Like I say, you can purchase a bag. I got a hundred of them for $7 and it came with all different colors. Even that one that changed all the colors, it came with like a black light ones and all kinds of fun stuff. So you get that little pack of LEDs. What you will wanna pay attention to is that your LEDs, when you buy them, if you can find them in a hardware store here, it's always better to buy them in town if you can. Um, but if you can buy them here, uh, make sure you find the ones that are three volt, okay? They can look exactly the same, but it'll be a 12 volt. That's not gonna work because these batteries are only three volts, okay? So find the three volt LEDs, and this is a fun little project you can do at home. Uh, if you've got 100 of them, you can make probably like 100 of these, yeah. Uh, or you can hook more than one LED onto your battery sometimes, depending on the LED. Now, if you look, this one requires a higher amount of energy because this is that one that changed colors. Uh, so I can make contact with this one and it works, but when I've got two of them on there, this guy ain't gonna do it, okay? So it's just that different amount of energy. This one requires a little bit more, but it's still three volts, okay? So that kind of showed us a little bit about that circuit. We wanna talk a little bit more about a circuit using this guy here. Okay, uh, this is an energy stick, okay? Now, an energy stick, we've got a red and a black. Normally, I say normally, uh, in electronics, when you've got a direct current or a direct, uh, yeah, direct current energy, uh, you've got a black, which is your negative, and you've got a red, which is your positive, okay? Now, these, uh, again, are a fun way of kind of showing electricity. I've got an insulator, this plastic. Remember that insulator? The insulator makes it hard for that electricity to travel. Toward the end here, I have conductors, okay? Now, this right here works as a continuity tester, okay? So this will test continuity, uh, and it will show us if those electrons are able to travel. Now, I'm gonna say that again because it's gonna get cool here in a minute. This will show us if those electrons are able to travel. So if it's detecting those electrons, then what'll happen is, the little spooky sound, and it lights up, okay? So when those electrons are, are able to travel, we get the spooky sound, and it lights up, okay? Oh, so that's pretty fun, because what you can do then, uh, you can do that with a device like this. Uh, you can even take your little, if you have your alligator clips and your battery, 
You can use that as a continuity tester uh, to see when that thing lights up. Um, but what's fun here is you can test different objects for their continuity. Now, you want continuity and conductivity, meaning those electrons can travel easily. I've got this styrofoam plate here. You can test it to see if it is conductive. Uh, nope. Okay, uh, so now I did make a circuit, right? We can see a circle there, but it's not able to transmit or push those little electrons through. I've got my scissors here, okay? The scissors are fun because I can touch them here on the plastic. Plastic is a insulator, right? So we're not, we don't have that conductivity. It's not able to travel through that even though we're touching it. The metal part is a Conductor, yeah. So now we have that little sound because we have that conductor, okay? So now we have, you can test different things. Um, you will notice that human beings are conductive. Like I said, if you watched that other one earlier where I got tortured in my hand doing all kinds of crazy stuff, you will see that we are in fact conductive. Um, and you can test different things that you think may or may not be. Now this is a tricky one, we'll see. I haven't tried this out ahead of time and that's on purpose because I wanted to test this while I was here. Um, I have got the graphite from our pencil uh, and we're gonna see if it's a high enough level of conductivity uh, for this to go off. Oh, yep, yeah, no problem, right? Uh, so our, our pencil lead or our graphite, okay, I call it lead because I'm old and, you know, those kind of things, but it's actually graphite. Uh, and so when we touch that graphite on here, uh, we can see that we do have that circuit, okay? We can hear it going, woo, 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 and we can catch that little sound and the light because our graphite is conductive, okay? That's going to be important when we step over to our one over here, <laughs> okay? Now, we're going to go back to AC for just a second because I want to illustrate something else with that there. Now, I have here what is called a plasma globe, okay? Uh, you've probably seen these before at uh, Halloween parties and things like that uh, where you have that, that little, those little going around on there, right? Uh, now, this plasma is actually, there's a Tesla coil on the inside, okay, generating AC, uh, and that AC current uh, is a high voltage, and it's actually using all of those little plasma lines as wires, okay? So the, the electrons are actually flowing via those little wires. Now, they're not a physical wire, but they are uh, a pathway for those electrons. Now, you can see when I put my hand close that it starts jumping toward my hand. I'm not touching it, but we can see that those electrons don't stop at this globe. This glass is an insulator, but it's not an, enough of an insulator to actually stop those electrons. And that's why if I touch it, we see that nice little coming up from there. Now I'm gonna show you something else that's pretty cool is if we take this guy here, okay? Now wait, what's happening here? I haven't touched anything. There is actually a field of those electrons that go around our Tesla coil and around our globe and they're enough that just that field is allowing our detector here to go off, okay? So because those electrons aren't stopping there, we're actually able to generate a field of electricity. Now, if you have a, a small halogen bulb, which is harder to get than it used to be, I was gonna bring one today, but I couldn't get a hold of one. Um, but a halogen bulb, you can actually light a halogen bulb on the outside of one of these because of that same thing. We're able to excite the area around it uh, and there's enough electrons to cause that energy. Now, remember, alternating current is looking for Earth. So, I just have one side here, okay? And because of the way that that works, we actually have enough of those electrons, even though that one's not even close. All I have here is my negative. We have enough of those electrons for our continuity detector to say, hey, something's going on. Now. What we'll do is we'll turn this off and back on and you'll see what happens here. Okay, ready? And, oh, I touched it. I have another one on the table over there that's going off too. So you can tell that it's actually that field is what is giving us that. Now it's voice activated, so that's happening there. But so that field is sharing those electrons uh, and it is able to give us enough, even way out here, uh, that we can pick up that, <laughs> there you go when I'm talking, 
There you go. And so we're going to see how far that field goes. So I'm going to travel away. We're still in that field, okay? So the electrons from that thing are going pretty far here. I'm going to bring it a little closer so I can go over a little bit. Yeah, you can hear where we're getting some but not enough way out here. So that electron field is actually traveling this far here. Now that technology is something that we use uh, to charge our phones. Okay, nowadays a lot of phones have got those little uh, chargers, the wireless chargers, right? That works off of the same principle. We've got essentially a Tesla coil that is distributing energy through the air. When you put your phone on it, uh, it is set up to receive that and then generate that into electricity for the battery. Okay, so. Now we want to talk a little bit about that graphite that we talked about earlier. Now this one here, as I said before, uh, you will want to make sure that you've got mom or dad with you for this demonstration here. Um, because it is going to be <laughs> a little bit higher amount of electricity, and so we want to be careful with this one, um, and we want to make sure that uh, nobody gets too close to the uh, active point on this one, okay? Now, the danger level is very, very low. You don't have to worry about doing this even with younger students, um, but you do want to have an adult present just so they don't end up taking something and sticking it in their eye or trying to touch A and B with their fingers, okay? So, you will need something that is conductive, and what we're actually going to make is a plasma cutter, okay? Now, they use plasma cutters uh, in... Uh, my brother is a, works on boilers and they'll use plasma cutters and plasma torches uh, to cut out big hunks of metal. Now this one here won't cut big hunks of metal, but it will cut this stuff here. Aluminum foil, okay? Uh, so it will cut aluminum foil and it will cut it with the movement of those electrons, okay? Now remember, as I said, uh, our negative, the electrons move from our, negat uh, from our negative and move to our positive. Now what we're going to do with these 9 volts is... Again, make sure you've got an adult with you. Uh, we're going to connect them together, okay? So we're going to put these in what is called series, and we're going to put them together, and we're going to create a bank, okay? Or a battery. <laughs> a battery is actually uh, a, a bunch of something put together for a purpose. So this is a battery. So we have a battery of batteries. So this is a battery battery. Uh, so with your battery battery, you're hooking your positive to the negative, okay? Uh, the way that a 9-volt is designed is it's actually designed to be able to do this. Some of your larger battery cells are actually just a combination of these batteries. So when you look here, uh, we have negative, positive. The positive goes to the negative, which goes to the positive, to the negative, to the positive, to the negative, positive, negative, positive, negative, okay? So we actually have a line that that electricity is following, okay? So those electrons are actually going from here, and then they'll go back here and travel through, and that's our circuit, okay? So, uh, we're going to put our white on the positive, okay? So, our white one will go to the positive, and our white will go to our workspace, okay? Our workspace here being the aluminum foil, okay? So, I've got my aluminum foil here, uh, and I'm going to clip our little conductor onto our aluminum foil, okay? So now our positive is on our aluminum foil, okay? What we need now is we need our electrode, okay? The electrode is the part where it is going to be sending those electrons uh, in, and they're going to happen fast, and they're going to happen hot, okay? So that's why you want to make sure you've got mom or dad with you. Now, nothing is really going to get hot to the touch or anything like that. Um, it, Like I say, it's really pretty safe, but... Just because there are like little, um, not really even sparks, but there is an arc, uh, you do want to make sure you've got mom or dad around. So if you look closely here, what I did uh, is in my alligator clip, I took the graphite, whoops, I dropped it. I took the graphite from our pencil, okay? And I took that graphite and I clipped it in our little bitty alligator clip, okay? So this is a stinger, okay? You, you could call it a stinger. Um, but our stinger there, our negative electrode, is clipped to the negative side of the battery, okay? So our negative electrode goes to the negative side of the battery, okay? Of our battery of batteries. Our workspace is connected to the positive side of the battery. Now, what's fun is when you make contact with this. Now, if you're doing this, 
uh, you don't want to just stick it to it, you want a movement, okay? Uh, which is the same if you're using a plasma torch, okay? You want a movement there. So what's gonna happen is I can, oh, I can actually cut that foil with electricity, okay? So you can see that I'm able to burn and cut that aluminum foil with the electricity from my batteries. So I've actually created a plasma torch out of our little graphite stinger, uh, some aluminum foil, and some batteries. So this one here, I'm using six batteries. It cuts it no problem. Like I say, at home, if you use four, it'll do it, uh, but you'll have to just put a little bit more time into it and move a little bit slower. So we can see there that with our stinger, we can woo easily cut that aluminum foil. This is a plasma cutter. It's using those electrons to actually heat up and cut that foil. So our foil here, as you can see, it's not hot to the touch. It's really not, uh, you know, anything dangerous, but you do want, as you saw, I mean, there is an arc there, so make sure there's an adult present. Don't do it, don't hold it in your mouth, don't do it close to your face. Uh, but we were able to burn some nice little cuts into our stuff from our plasma cutter, okay? So that plasma cutter also showed that movement of electrons from negative to positive in direct current. Direct current always goes in one direction. Alternating current does kind of a wave thing, so we really didn't get into that one too much. Um, again, our little LED, you can make that switch there. Uh, and these are some fun things to do with electricity. Make sure you got mom and dad present for the battery one. Uh, and that should be a good little start to your Ray Kitty kit uh, to get some LEDs and some alligator clips. All right, so I am Mr. Dave. And as always, uh, remember that science shows you matter.